टाइम पीरियड एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ ए मास अटैच टू इलास्टिक स्प्रिंग डिराइविंग इक्वेशन ऑफ द टाइम पीरियड एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी फैक्टर्स इफेक्टिंग टाइम पीरियड एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द लेक्चर क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड गेट एक्सेस टू आर हंड्रेड ऑफ कंसेप्चुअल लेक्चर्स फॉर फ्री Firstly understanding the easy concept of time period and frequency let's consider a mass attached to elastic spring now if the mass move from the mean position to the extreme position and back to the mean position then it goes again from the mean position to the extreme position and comes back to the mean position we say that spring has completed one oscillation or one cycle now time taken by the mass to complete one oscillation or one cycle is called time period let me repeat it time taken by the mass to complete one oscillation or one cycle is called time period remember the time period is denoted by capital t if i ask you what is meant by t is equal to 4 second can you answer it well it means this spring will take 4 second to complete one oscillation or one cycle while frequency is defined as the number of oscillations or cycles completed in one second let me repeat it the number of oscillations or cycles completed in one second frequency is denoted by small f note down that frequency is equal to the reciprocal of time period The SI unit of frequency is per second or hertz. The best example to remember frequency is if Mr. John eats 10 bananas in 1 second, then his banana eating frequency is 10 hertz. If Mr. John eats 20 bananas in 1 second, then his banana eating frequency is 20 hertz. Let me ask you the frequency of this spring is 8 hertz do you understand it i hope you can it means that in one second this mass completes 8 oscillations thus remember that time period is defined as time taken by the mass to complete one oscillation while frequency is defined is the number of oscillations completed in one second or per second now let me derive the equation of time period and frequency consider a mass m attached to elastic spring we have learned in the previous video that if we displace this mass from the mean position to the extreme position it will perform shm we have also learned two very important properties of shm in the previous lecture firstly in shm restoring force is always directly proportional to the displacement from the mean position and opposite in direction secondly acceleration is always directly proportional to the displacement from the mean position and opposite in direction we use this second property of the shm in order to derive the equation of time period so i take it and write it here to remove the sign of proportionality we have to put some sort of constant in case of mass attached to the spring the constant is k upon m so i get a is equal to negative k upon m and to x i call this equation number 1 now listen carefully there is also another constant of acceleration in terms of angular motion which is 4 pi squared upon t squared and you will learn this constant in higher classes i put this constant in this equation so i get a is equal to negative 4 pi squared upon t squared and to x i call this equation number 2 thus we have two equations of acceleration for this mass m now comparing equation 1 and equation 2 
we get negative k upon m is equal to negative 4 pi squared upon t squared and to x. Negative sign are cancelled out at both the sides. Also, x is cancelled out at both the sides. Remember that this t squared is the time period of the mass attached to the spring. So, here t is our subject. Shifting t squared and m, we get t squared into k is equal to 4 pi squared and to m or t squared is equal to 4 pi squared and to m upon k. Taking square root on both sides, we get t is equal to 2 pi square root m upon k. Thus, the time period of this spring is t is equal to 2 pi square root m upon k. Now, what about frequency of this mass? Well, we already know that frequency is equal to a reciprocal of the time period. Thus, we take reciprocal of this time period and we get f is equal to 1 upon 2 pi square root of k upon m. This is the frequency of mass attached to elastic spring. Finally, let me teach you factors affecting time period and frequency. As we know that the time period of a mass attached to elastic spring is t is equal to 2 pi square root of m upon k. From this equation, we can write that time period is directly proportional to square root of m and time period is inversely proportional to square root of k. Here, m is the mass attached to a spring and k is the stiffness of the spring. Now, consider two cases. Case number 1 and case number 2. Let in case number 1, 4 kg mass is attached to elastic spring. In case 2, 16 kg mass is attached to elastic spring. Let k is constant in both the cases. We know that time period is directly proportional to square root of mass. So, in case 1, t is directly proportional to square root of 4 or t is equal to 2 second. Also, in case 2, time period is directly proportional to square root of mass. Our t is directly proportional to square root of 16. So, we get t is equal to 4 second. From this example, we learn that if we increase size of the mass attached to elastic spring, time period will be increased. Lastly, what about the frequency? Well, we know that frequency is equal to reciprocal of the time period. So, the frequency in case number 1 is f is equal to 1 upon 2 second and it is equal to 0 0.5 hertz. While frequency in the second case is f is equal to 1 upon 4 second. So, we get 0 0.25 hertz. Therefore, we say that if we increase the size of the mass attached to the spring, its time period increases, but its frequency decreases because there is inverse relationship between time period and frequency. This was all about time period and frequency of a mass attached to elastic spring.